There are no drivers and no guard. In my opinion, it was a thousand percent efficient. Oh, I've got a model of it, that's quite good. Everything is automatic. It's like a, a huge toy train set, and it was brilliant. It's great that they're preserving it, but it's sad that they closed it. The journey from one side of London to the other takes exactly 10 minutes. It's not just a lump of metal, it's actually seen life. A bit like us, age, get another, another few wrinkles. What we want to do is say, well, this is what has survived, this story happened, the Mail Rail Underground Railway closed, and this is what we got out of it, rather than pretend that we're something we're not. We are in the British Postal Museum and Archives Museum store where we keep our collection prior to it being used in exhibitions and displays and things like that. Its primary function is a store but where we also do some work on the collections and do some conservation work such as that that's happening with the railway trains at the moment. This is a, a mail rail train um, which took the mail underground um, in London and um, it's in fairly good condition. What we want to do is retain the historical integrity of the object and help the museums tell a story and preserve their objects for, we like to think, forever. The first job I'm going to have to do is decouple the motive unit from the bogey unit, which means I've got to lift the bogey unit and move the motive unit away from, from it. Not less than easy. What we're doing, working with a conservator, is we're looking at preserving those trains. So we're looking at, at cleaning them up a bit, we're looking at stabilising them and preserving them so that they don't deteriorate, so they don't rust, um, and also so they're a bit cleaner for being able to use them in exhibitions and put them on to display. But what we're not doing is restoring them or repainting them or taking them, making them look like they're brand new again, but we are just trying to preserve them for their long-term stability. I know this is a fairly hardy sort of piece of kit, um, but you have to be a little bit gentle to start with so you can actually find out what's, what you've got. There's some corrosion there, and if that is corroded through, and I go a bit too heavy on it, I'll damage it more than is necessary. People have got a, a real fascination for the railway. People are really interested. It's one of the most inquired about aspects through our inquiry services. And so it's very important to ensure that we preserve that story and collect objects around that story so that in generations to come, when people want to know more about it, there's evidence of it, there's physical evidence left of it. And then there's an ability for, for the museum to do what museums do and to teach people and help people understand parts of history. Mail Rail, obviously, um, being the post office's own underground railway, is quite unique, uh, it, not just in the UK, but around the world. And the fact that the system is mothballed and has been since 2003 means I've never actually been able to see it in situ. So the opportunity to come to Debden to meet the restoring team and to see the new vehicles which have been recovered is one that I, I've been anticipating for some time. So I think we're quite excited to be here today. It's one of those things you've, I've read about for years and years and years, but very, very few people get a chance to actually see what it looks like. Um, if you're a Londoner, like I am, the idea that mail travels underneath London, or did in the history, is just fantastic. It's such a rare chance to see this kind of a historical quirk, so I'm delighted that it's being preserved so anyone who's got an interest can go and have a look and see what it actually looked like. People like the Prism Trust and the Association of Independent Museums who both grant aided this work, make sure that our heritage is kept for prosperity. Prism Fund is a special uh, pot of money that funds objects of um, historical significance. So the mail rail unit obviously is very important in the history not only of the mail service but in terms of transportation as well. 
here at the British Postal Museum and Archive, we've got some great stories to tell about communication, human endeavour, engineering magnificence, and we need to bring those stories out for people. One of the best ways they can do that is by actually physically getting in touch with the past, hence preserving, restoring, conserving, making available. Abrasions on the paintwork where trolleys and things have been moved about so it's actually been used and there's a sort of more of a human story in that. You can also see a yellow paint underneath the red um, and I believe this was actually used in a film in about 1991 um, when it was supposed to be a, something to do with the Papal Underground Railway. Hudson Hawk, Bruce Willis in the film they were doing a heist in the Vatican because the Vatican have an underground railway as well and they wouldn't let them film there so they used air tunnels so we painted up two of our trains for that. It's nice to see the life of a thing through its layers of paint for nothing uh, better way to describe it. This is different layers we've even got gold paint on this uh, probably from a jubilee. <laughs> early 20th century the congestion on the streets of London was such that it was becoming more and more difficult to quickly move the mail across London. So various options were reviewed and considered by the post office and eventually they decided and settled upon the idea of this underground driverless electric railway which is what the railway was. In 1995 they moved the emphasis of, of rail transport out of the central London stations into a place called Willesden where they centralised the, the rail distribution. That meant that the railway stations it served and many of the Royal Mail offices it served were no longer being used for those purposes and for those functions and by 2003 when it's come towards the end of the, the life of the network there were only three or four Royal Mail offices that the mail was being moved between and there wasn't a huge volume of mail being moved between those offices and so the need for it had completely passed by then. When I first started the job and I first saw it I just thought it was amazing. It was just like a, a huge toy train set and it was brilliant. And they used to get up to all sorts of things. They used to put the old youth in training, down the chutes into the containers and send them along. <laughs> we weren't supposed to, but that's what they used to do. I worked on it for 25 years. Me, like everybody else, got a job on the post office and kind of ended up on the Underground Railway and thought, I'll stay here till I find a decent job. <laughs> and after 10 years, you realised it is a decent job and it's probably the best job on the post office. Preserving the heritage in the heritage industry uh, is often is a backroom job that people don't often see. And it's, I feel, really important so we don't reinvent the wheel, we can understand what other people have done in the past and where we've come from. Um, so there's a lot in heritage that we all appreciate, but the idea is that we keep it the same, we present that heritage, we stop it deteriorating any, any further than it has. So we can present it to the public in its true form.